الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم على محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم We are still studying the sittings from the sittings of Ramadan by الشيخ العلامة الوالد our elder الشيخ صالح بن فوزان الفوزان may Allah preserve him The Sheikh, he said, warning against following the footsteps of the shaitan. He said, all, all praise is due to Allah for his bounty and kindness. May prayers and peace be upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family and his companions. To proceed, Allah exalted be, he said, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu la tattabi'u khutuwati shaitan. O you who believe, follow not the footsteps of the shaitan, Satan. Surah Nur. Ayah 21. He's calling his believing slaves, commanding them and prohibiting them. He commands them with that which will cause their entrance into paradise. And prohibits them, prohibits that which will cause their entrance into the fire. Everything that Allah the exalted commands with is a reason for entrance into paradise. And everything that he has prohibited is a reason for entrance into the fire. Therefore, Allah calls them even though he is free of any need from his servants. He does not call them for his own benefit, nor due to a need that he has for them. Rather, he is free of all needs. Glorify be he if all of them were to disbelieve. This would not decrease his kingdom in the least. And if all of them were to believe, this would not increase his kingdom in the least. His dominion is complete without them. However, they are the ones who are in need of faith. They are in need of righteous actions. They are the ones who are harmed by their by disbelief, polytheism, and sins. Therefore, he calls them for their benefit, and he commands them for their own benefit. He prohibits them from that which harms them. This is from his mercy, and this is the greatest bounty, that Allah calls you while he is not in need of you, and you turn away from him while you are in need of him. And you distance yourself from Allah while you cannot go without him for a twinkling of an eye. One, like, for example, this oxygen that you breathe belongs to him, Right? So if he takes it away, we will, be, we, will be, we will all be dead, you know? The water that we drink is his. So everything is his. We don't have anything here. We don't, we, there is nothing that belongs to us. The, this body is his. The soul is his. The wealth is his. Everything is his. All these blessings that we are enjoying is his. The Sheikh said, this is from the most amazing of affairs and an indication of deviation in one's ideas. The corruption of one's thought process and the loss of one's, one's intellect. If the intellect was sound and in, in, intact, then it would know the wisdom in the commands of Allah and his prohibitions. And that they, in, in essence, benefit them. So if the people were to adhere to them, they would attain benefit in this life and in the hereafter. Whereas if they leave them off, harm will come to them in this life and in the hereafter. Therefore, they destroy themselves and cause loss to their own selves. They turn away from, from obedience of Allah while they are the ones who would benefit from obeying Allah. Therefore, harm and benefit comes back to them. So, where are their intellects? And what are they thinking? However, perhaps these intellects are deficient. Thus, they do not benefit them. Allah said, لَهُمْ قُلُوبٌ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ بِهَا وَلَهُمْ أَعْيُنٌ لَا يُبْصِرُونَ بِهَا وَلَهُمْ آذَانٌ لَا يَسْمَعُونَ بِهَا They have hearts wherewith they understand not. They have eyes wherewith they see not. And they have ears wherewith they hear not. Surah Al-A'raf. Now, Meaning, they do not comprehend with a comprehension that benefits them. Nor do they examine with an examination that benefits them. They do not hear with hearing that benefits them. And if they do hear 
and see. Their hearing and sight is like that of an animal. Subhanallah. They see, yet they do not know. Thus, they take to that which contains destruction because they don't know any better. Likewise, is the person who does not benefit from his intellect, hearing, and sight. This person is more astray than the animals because the animals will not be held accountable and they will not be called to account whereas the human being is held accountable and called to account and either punishment or reward awaits him. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, أُولَٰئِكَ كَالْأَنْعَامْ بَلْ هُمْ أَضَلُّ أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْغَافِلُونَ They are like cattle. Nay, even more astray, those, they are the heedless ones. Surah Al-A'raf, Ayah 179. Just as Allah calls to paradise, the shaitan and his friends call to the hellfire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّمَا يَدْعُوا حِزْبَهُ لِيَكُونُوا مِنْ أَصْحَابِ السَّعِيرِ he only invites his hizb, his followers, that they may become from the dwellers of the blazing fire. Alaykum salam. Surah Fatir, ayah 6. Then the shaykh went on to say the difference between the call of Allah and the call of the shaitan and his helpers is that they call, is that they call to the hellfire. This does not mean that they this doesn't mean that they say to the people, come to the, to the Alpha. If they said this, then none would come. However, they call, they call the people who follow their desires and, 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 and forbidden lusts. And they beautify for them what is repugnant. SubhanAllah. Giving it a fair image. Na'udhu Billah. Shaitan is like that. Because Shaitan... He will come to you even though that sin is ugly and bad. But he will beautify it to you. So he will beautify the shirk, for example. He will, say, he will come to, to, the, to these grave worshippers, you know. And say, you're not actually worshipping this occupant of the grave. You're not worshipping this saint, you know. You're actually honoring the saint. Allah loves this. Ha! Ah, this is how he gets them, you see. He is very tricky. Master of deception. So he knows how to trick them. Is a trickster. So they deceive them and trick them. Thus, they lead them astray, giving them the impression that they are sincere and well-wishers. Look at this. Well-wishers friends and loved ones for them. While in reality, they are the most ardent of enemies. May Allah protect us from that. So you are between two calls. The calls of Allah to paradise. And they call the shaitan in his group to the fire. So be careful which one you respond to. The shaykh said, this is something clear. If you are upon the obedience of Allah, uprightness. And love for what is good. Preserving the obligatory matters. Striving hard to do what is easy from the supergatory act of worship. Then you have responded to the call of Allah. So basically, what the shaykh is saying, if you comply with the commandment of Allah... Meaning is you perform the, the five daily prayers, right? The five daily prayers, the obligatory prayers. You give you zakat, you fast the month of Ramadan, and you perform Umrah and Hajj. And you do what Allah requires from you. And then you do the extra, which, which are a nawafil, the optional prayers, optional fast, and other than that. Then this is what is, you know, intended from you. This is what Allah wants from you. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from you. Then you have responded to call to the call of Allah. If you are upon the opposite of this, frequently sinning, may Allah protect us, and disobeying Allah, abandoning the obligations, no salat, no zakat, nothing, falling into what is impermissible without concern. You have no concern, you don't care. May Allah protect us. Then you have responded to the call of the shaitan. Subhanallah. And you are you are from the party. Hizb al-Shaytan, the body of the Shaytan. Therefore, it is upon you to repent to Allah and to free yourself from the Shaytan while you have the chance, while you have an opportunity now, you're still living. 
This is what is obligatory upon every Muslim to think about regarding himself and to gain insight. And Allah is the grantor of success. So the Sheikh, he, uh, he, um, he, he ended by saying, may, may prayers and peace be upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa his family, his, his companion. So basically, I can summarize this for you, that there are two paths. There is the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is straight. Which is straight. And then you have the path of the shayateen, which is not straight. So, so, if you follow the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you, you follow his path, then that would lead you to his pleasure. It would lead you to paradise. But if you follow the path of the shaitan, that would lead you to the hellfire. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the hellfire. And may Allah benefit us with these classes. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, sallallahu ala Muhammad, wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.